Hello, and welcome back to Coin Lady Channel. XRP futures are now available on the Polish cryptocurrency exchange Polonia X. So yeah, you know, even despite the certainty with respect to crypto, I'm discovering that many of these exchanges are now using the situation. I'm not sure if this is open to US traders, but XRP futures and XRP perpetual contracts can now be purchased on a major cryptocurrency exchange. One of the oldest cryptocurrency exchanges, Polonia X, has added a new listing, USDT margined XRP perpetual contracts, according to a tweet from the exchange. Major US crypto exchange Coinbase announced the debut of Perpetual Futures, featuring XRP for Coinbase advanced users in qualified non-US locations. Since I don't trade on the Polonia X exchange, I can't say for sure if this is open to Americans. I'd like to thank XRP Crypto Wolf for sharing that, and if you end up using Polonia X, please let me know in the comments or tag me on Twitter. Here's another one from the XRP Crypto Wolf, the XRP Ledger has been integrated into a major DAP marketplace. As a result, the XRP Ledger is currently being adopted by a growing number of dApps. DAP Radar, which calls itself the world's DAP shop, has just added support for the XRP Ledger, giving the cryptocurrency another integration. Users can now use DAP Radar to monitor dApps and NFT collections in the XRP Ledger and remain abreast of developments in the ecosystem. Yes, DAP Radar just added a remark along those lines. As such, I assume it will be used to keep tabs on NFT accumulations inside the XRP ecosystem. Someone, either Brett or Brad or David Schwartz, mentioned how much something has grown in the past year. And I think we're really going to continue to see this increase more and more as the years go by. New systems are being added to the XRP ledger regularly. With the release of Ripple Payments the day before, the company introduced a revamped version of its payment product that includes integration with XRP Ledger's native decentralized exchange, expanding the global liquidity options available to Ripple clients and easing their onboarding into new markets. It's all very illuminating news, then. It's great to see that more people are working together to solve problems. So, once again, I'd like to express my gratitude to XRP Crypto Wolf for sharing that Ratham economy in here, which has provided us with some fresh details about the Ripple partner Flutterwave. The top payment technology firm in Africa, Flutterwave, has now announced that it has been granted official clearance to enable international remittances in Malawi. On Thursday, October 19, the license for transnational money transfer was issued. Transferring money from Malawians to people in other African countries who are sending it back home is a hassle. The World Bank predicts that by 2023, international remittances would have increased by 1.4%, reaching $656 billion. The issuance of the IMTO licensed positions Flutterwave to successfully fuel remittances into Malawi, which is especially important given the millions of Malawians and Africans who live and work overseas. Flutterwave is a Ripple partner, and they have just recently become authorized to process these kinds of payments in this region of Africa. In the long run, this will help stabilize exchange rates, which would enhance economic growth and make it possible to invest in infrastructure. These are the side effects, if you will, that occur whenever something more efficient and effective enters the picture. For example, if payments were never this robust in the past, then you would never experience economic growth or witness the ensuing innovations. And now because of RippleNet technology through Flutterwave, we're definitely going to see a bit of an economic burst over there in Malawi. Send money internationally with Flutterwave. Aside from being protected from fraud scams and other financial risks associated with international money transfers, residents of Malawi can now take advantage of competitive rates quick money transfers, user-friendly mobile apps and web platforms, access to transact in 150 currencies, 24-7 customer support, and strict adherence to the highest security and compliance standards. There you have it, gentlemen, yet another partner in the Ripple, producing waves. See for yourselves, you guys. The news of this happening first broke in October, it appears that the license has now been obtained. Yes, this is indeed excellent news.
They wanted to express their appreciation to the Wrath of Khan Man for sharing that information on the progress being made in Africa. Okay, time for a little diversion. I just read this on Twitter from Eisen. D-Chain has been highlighted in Coinbase is a learn program offering doors to educate a huge user base on the ecosystem's sustainability activities and more. After the listing of its native token VET and the VTHO on Coinbase earlier this year, it seems as though VeChain and those coins are getting a lot of love from Coinbase at the moment. The VeChain Thor blockchain has been featured in Coinbase Learn program, opening doors to educate a vast user base about the ecosystem. By participating in the V World mobile wallet and taking part in the Learn campaign's instructional quizzes, users can win VET rewards. VeChain's Web3 for Better White Paper was created in partnership with the Boston Consulting Group, and the goal of this campaign is to increase interest in and participation in VeChain's innovative proof-of-authority consensus process, twin token concept, and enterprise use cases. The VeChain team is ecstatic to announce that they will be working with Coinbase to bring in an additional 750,000 to a million users for the VeChain Thor platform. So tremendous news here guys! Also, I've got to keep an eye on VeChain because it's one of the heritage coins in my portfolio. It's one of the 15 or so coins in my $10,000 plus portfolio, and I trade it with my subscribers over at patreon.com slash working money channel. And if you people follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel, you'll see how I split that 10 grand among several unpopped coins of various varieties. As a result, you can still make a purchase at quite low costs. Six months ago, when the market was nowhere near its all-time low, I bought a bunch of these coins. Even if the market was down and is back up again, I believe there is still a great deal of opportunity in it. To avoid putting all of my coins into one basket, I've started looking at a wider variety of metrics for each coin. So, once again, if you're into that sort of stuff, you can see what I'm trading at patreon.com slash working money channel, and I'd like to draw your attention to VeChain, another coin I've discussed extensively on this channel because it combines utility with profit potential. However, VeChain is prone to wild price swings, so if you buy it now, which, to be fair, isn't even the bottom of the market, you might be disappointed. Once more, that brings us to 11100% 11150% from our current position relative to the previous peak. Again, I adore the VeChain for many reasons, and this currency is among my favorites. The practical application is secondary to how much I enjoy the way it flows, if you catch my drift. I'm going to be sharing my targets for VeChain and all the other cryptos obviously on my Patreon for everybody so something to think about if you want to or if you do hold VeChain are looking to diversify Michael Branch here posting this as reported by Bloomberg. Brad Garlinhouse the CEO of Ripple has indicated the company's readiness to take its legal battle with the US Securities and Exchange Commission over the XRP cryptocurrency to the US Supreme Court. Okay, fellas, we got word yesterday that could interest you. This was revealed during an interview Brad Garland gave to Bloomberg TV. According to Bloomberg's coverage of DC Fintech Week, Ripple has spent more than $150 million on legal fees. According to Brad Garland House, the legal dispute is one of the biggest in the crypto industry and has received a lot of attention as a result. In case you missed it, I did mention that Brad Garland needs a new administration in order to get crypto up and running in the US in this morning's video which I uploaded after the market closed. In case you guys missed it, I'll provide a link to it now. However, let's look at a somewhat different scenario. Okay. While not ruling out the prospect of a settlement in the future, Bloomberg reports that Garland House underscored Ripple's will to continue the legal struggle. In an interview with Bloomberg, attorney Brad Garland House discussed the case's potential appeal to the United States Supreme Court as follows. He stated we should check the odds in Las Vegas to see what happens. To the very end, we will be there. In case you were wondering, $100 million is not pocket change. Still, I have no doubt that Ripple will go forward, this is excellent news for XRP investors and the community at large. This XRP file was recently provided to us by James K. He tells the community that a suggested timeline for remedies, discovery, and briefing has been filed to Judge Torres.
The parties agree that events occurring before to the filing of the SEC filed complaint will be subject to acceptable discovery. Does Brad's statement that they will fight to the bitter end suggest that a settlement is off the table? The SEC that a scheduling order from the court be entered 90 days before any remedies related discovery begins. As long as the proposed finding is limited to pre-complaint discovery, Ripple is open to the idea. The SEC plans to seek certain post-complaint discoveries that it deems relevant to the claims blah, blah, blah. And the parties further agree that no later than 45 days after the entry of the scheduled ordering Ripple may serve on the SEC, an updated version of the proposed report by Anthony M. Bracco. The SEC may conduct a deposition of Mr. Bracco within 90 days of the scheduling order. Please elaborate on the possibilities and probabilities involved. Although the parties may later seek leave from the court to serve discovery on third parties pursuant to Rule 45 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, they agree to refrain from doing so at this time. Please service any discovery demands made by third parties, both parties retain the right to object. The SEC may file its brief with respect to remedies at any time, but no later than 30 days following the remedy. Therefore, you've effectively given us the time frame there. And this isn't even the final page. George G. has put his name on it. 10, 0. Here we have Fred Rispoli's commentary on the matter. This is all tea leaf reading. However, I do not find the tone of this letter to be as biting as that of the other letters. This is a fascinating point made by a fellow XRP lawyer. Community. There was even some agreement between the parties, so I have faith that we can reach a settlement sooner than the SEC expects. What does this mean, if anything? The SEC and Ripple meet today in an effort to find a remedy for Ripple Section 5 violations, as I mentioned earlier with respect to its institutional sales. If no resolution is reached, both parties will ask the court to set up a briefing schedule. Is a compromise likely, in your opinion? Okay, gentlemen, you all have excellent questions. Settlement or no settlement. The XRP transactions will be the focus. Here's some commentary from Michael Branch. Judge Annalisa Torres has established the ground principles for the settlement of the ongoing XRP litigation with the SEC. According to what we saw before, Judge Annalisa Torres of the Southern District of New York will preside over the next part of the XRP litigation which includes remedies, discovery, and briefing. It was only yesterday that we learned that the SEC and the crypto payment company had agreed, in a letter to the federal judge dated November 9, that discovery in their settlement talks could include events that occurred before the U.S. regulator filed the initial complaint against the crypto payment firm in connection to XRP. The SEC then needs time to undertake some remedial discovery, so it has asked for a 90-day gap from the scheduling order's entry. In contrast, Ripple supports this idea without hesitation. If it strictly follows the pre-complaint finding process, it will only agree to disclosures about events before the SEC lawsuit was filed. In light of the foregoing, it is evident that the fintech firms were given and continue to have permission to challenge any SEC findings that emerge post-complaint. Ripple might ask a judge to delay the SEC's deadline proposal and approval if necessary. In addition, the scheduled order stipulated that Ripple had 45 days to submit a replacement report. And yet again this year, by Anthony Bracco, who gave testimony. The SEC now has permission to depose additional witnesses. But as Fred the Cop points out, it doesn't sound like they still have the fight in them. It's a disgrace that they've been losing this case for so long. So, they moved on to more pressing matters. They seem to have shifted their focus recently. It seems clear at this moment that they have no intention of backing down and that Ripple will continue to fight to the death. This is fantastic news for anyone who own XRP. As I mentioned before, the SEC has the right to depose Braco within the next 90 days following the scheduling order with the court's approval, etc. According to Judge Torres, Ripple has the right to file an objection to any such future reports. It should be noted, however, that no discovery requests from other parties would be honored without prior court consent. 
A long and winding journey is ahead, as seen by the itinerary. But this is in line with predictions from pro-XRP lawyer John Dean, who thinks a lot of haggling will happen before a final settlement deal is made and who thinks that a settlement offering $20 million lower than the original could be regarded a 99.9% .9 success story for Ripple Labs. That explains John Dean's projected image. And just so you know, is this basically a settlement offer Jeremy Hogan? Also commenting on this, nothing less than the sovereign rights of other countries is at risk, so this should be intriguing. In light of the Supreme Court of the United States ruling that Ripple sales must have occurred in the United States or at the very least on a United States stock exchange, one would wonder how the SEC's experts plan to circumvent this ruling. Is he going to bring up something more from the Morrison vs. National Australia Bank case now? Exactly how are you going to demonstrate domestic vs. international sales? That's an excellent query. If the SEC can't prove their case, they're going to have a tough time in court, as I'm sure you're aware. There will be no settlement, as Emo Barak has confirmed. And Sherry underneath saying you know, the parties settle on disgorgement and fines during the remedies phase. We're in this, now. We're in the remedy space. Therefore, there has been no agreement reached so far. However, after summary judgment was issued, all chance of a genuine settlement, where the parties met on equal negotiating grounds, was gone. Could they agree on which Ripple will receive payment before the finding is made? Sure. That there is only one wave affecting X, Y, and Z at this point. Therefore, it is no longer a settlement at this moment. It's about as good as it gets at this point, and Ripple has said that they intend to keep going. In the next step, called remedies, what do you guys think will occur? In my opinion, the SEC is probably done with this by this point. Considering how many other lawsuits they want to pursue in the crypto area, I'm not sure if they have the will to fight, they probably assumed that catching the big fish would seal the deal. But look, guys, Ripple has shown they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the SEC and come out on top. What's another $20 million after spending $150 million on lawyers, as John Deaton puts it? I have a feeling XRP will surpass these levels now that it has been realist on US exchanges, making this bull run unlike any other. If it completes a full Fibonacci retracement from this peak, then XRP will be worth more than $7 per coin. My personal belief is that XRP has the potential to rise to above $13 per coin if we continue to use the old market high and low as our guide, not to mention the impending real-world utility of the currency. I'm interested in your opinions. In case you enjoyed what I had to offer and haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. See you soon, bye.